A fast neutron reactor or simply a fast reactor is a category of nuclear reactor in which the fission chain reaction is sustained by fast neutrons. Such a reactor needs no neutron moderator, but must use fuel that is relatively rich in fissile material when compared to that required for a thermal reactor. Introduction equals Basic fission concepts equals, In order to sustain a fission chain reaction, the neutrons released in fission events have to react with other atoms in the fuel. The chance of this occurring depends on the energy of the neutron. Most atoms will only undergo induced fission with high-energy neutrons, although a smaller number prefer much lower energies. Natural uranium consists mostly of three isotopes, U-238, U-235, and trace quantities of U-234, a decay product of U-238. U-238 accounts for roughly 99.3% of natural uranium and undergoes fission only by neutrons with energies of 5 mV or greater, the so-called fast neutrons. About 0.7% of natural uranium is U-235, which undergoes fission by neutrons of any energy, but particularly by lower energy neutrons. When either of these isotopes undergoes fission they release neutrons around 1 to 2 mV too low to cause fission in U-238, and too high to do so easily in U-235. The common solution to this problem is to slow the neutron from these fast speeds using a neutron moderator, any substance that reacts with the neutrons and makes them give up some of their energy. The most common moderator is normal water which slows the neutrons through inelastic scattering until the neutrons reach thermal equilibrium with the water. The key to reactor design is to carefully lay out the fuel and water so the neutrons have time to slow enough to become highly reactive with the U-235, but not so far as to allow them easy pathways to escape the reactor core entirely. Although U-238 will not undergo fission by the neutrons released in fission, Thermal neutrons can be captured by the nucleus to transmute the atom into Pu-239. Pu-239 has a neutron cross-section very similar to that of U-235, and most of the atoms created this way will undergo fission from the thermal neutrons. In most reactors this accounts for as much as A of the energy being generated. Not all of the Pu-239 is burned up during normal operation, and the leftover, along with leftover U-238 can be separated out to be used in new fuel during nuclear reprocessing. Water is a common moderator for practical reasons, but has its disadvantages. From a nuclear standpoint, the primary problem is that water can absorb a neutron and remove it from the reaction. It does this just enough that the amount of U-235 in natural or is too low to sustain the chain reaction. The neutrons lost their absorption in the water and U-238, along with those lost to the environment, results in too few left in the fuel. The most common solution to this problem is to slightly concentrate the amount of U-235 in the fuel to produce enriched uranium, with the leftover U-238 known as depleted uranium. Other designs use different moderators, like heavy water, that produce more neutrons than they absorb, allowing them to run on unenriched fuel. In either case, the reactor's neutron economy is based on thermal neutrons equals fast fission, breeders equals, although U-235 and Pu-239 are less sensitive to higher energy neutrons, they still remain somewhat reactive well into the MeV area. This means that if you enrich the fuel you will eventually reach a threshold where there are enough fissile atoms in the fuel that a chain reaction can be maintained even with fast neutrons. The primary advantage is that by removing the moderator, the size of the reactor can be greatly reduced, and the complexity somewhat. This is commonly used for shipboard and submarine reactor systems, where size and weight are major concerns. The downside to the fast reaction is that fuel enrichment is an expensive process, so this is generally not suitable for electrical generation or other roles where cost is more important than size. There is another advantage to the fast reaction that has led to considerable development for civilian use. Fast reactors lack a moderator and thus lack one of the systems that remove neutrons from the system. Those running on Pu-239 further increase the number of neutrons, because its most common fission cycle gives off three neutrons rather than the mix of two and three neutrons released from U-235. By surrounding the reactor core with a moderator and then a blanket of U-238, 
those neutrons can be captured and used to breed more Pu-239. This is the same reaction that occurs internally in conventional designs, but in this case the blanket does not have to sustain a reaction and thus can be made of natural uranium or even depleted uranium. Due to the surplus of neutrons from Pu-239 fission, the reactor will actually breed more Pu-239 than it consumes. The blanket material can then be processed to extract the Pu-239 to replace the losses in the reactor, and the surplus is then mixed with other fuel to produce MOX fuel that can be fed into conventional slow neutron reactors. A single fast reactor can thereby feed several slow ones, greatly increasing the amount of energy extracted from the natural uranium, from less than 1% in a normal once through cycle, to as much as 60% in the best fast reactor cycles. Given the limited stores of natural uranium ore, and the rate that nuclear power was expected to take over baseload generation, through the 1960s and 70s fast breeder reactors were seen as the solution to the world's energy needs. Using twice through processing, a fast breeder economy increases the fuel capacity of known ore deposits by as much as 100 times, meaning that even existing ore sources would last hundreds of years. The disadvantage to this approach is that the breeder reactor has to be fed highly enriched fuel, which is very expensive to produce. Even though it breeds more fuel than it consumes, the resulting MOX is still expensive. It was widely expected that this would still be below the price of enriched uranium as demand increased and known resources dwindled. Through the 1970s, breeder designs were being widely experimented on, especially in the USA, France and the USSR. However, this coincided with a crash in uranium prices. The expected increased demand led mining companies to build up new supply channels, which came online just as the rate of reactor construction stalled in the mid-1970s. The resulting oversupply caused fuel prices to decline from about $40 in 1980 to less than $20 by 1984. Breeders produced fuel that was much more expensive, on the order of $100 to $160, and the few units that had reached commercial operation proved to be economically disastrous. Interest in breeder reactors were further muted by Jimmy Carter's April 1977 decision to defer construction of breeders in the U.S. due to proliferation concerns, and the terrible operating record of France's Superfer copyright Nix reactor. Advantages Fast neutron reactors can reduce the total radiotoxicity of nuclear waste, and dramatically reduce the waste's lifetime. They can also use all or almost all of the fuel in the waste. Fast neutrons have an advantage in the transmutation of nuclear waste. With fast neutrons, the ratio between splitting and the capture of neutrons of plutonium or minor actinide is often larger than when the neutrons are slower, at thermal or near-thermal epithermal speeds. The transmuted odd-numbered actinides split more easily. After they split, the actinides become a pair of fission products. These elements have less total radiotoxicity. Since disposal of the fission products is dominated by the most radiotoxic fission product, cesium-137, which has a half-life of 30.1 years, the result is to reduce nuclear waste lifetimes from tens of millennia to a few centuries. The processes are not perfect, but the remaining transuranics are reduced from a significant problem to a tiny percentage of the total waste, because most transuranics can be used as fuel. Fast reactors technically solve the fuel shortage argument against uranium-fueled reactors without assuming unexplored reserves, or extraction from dilute sources such as ordinary granite or the ocean. They permit nuclear fuels to be bred from almost all the actinides, including known abundant sources of depleted uranium and thorium, and light water reactor wastes. On average, more neutrons per fission are produced from fissions caused by fast neutrons than from those caused by thermal neutrons. This results in a larger surplus of neutrons beyond those required to sustain the chain reaction. These neutrons can be used to produce extra fuel, or to transmute long half-life waste to less troublesome isotopes such as was done at the Fair Copyright Nix reactor in Maroule in France, or some can be used for each purpose. Though conventional thermal reactors also produce excess neutrons, fast reactors can produce enough of them to breed more fuel than they consume. Such designs are known as fast breeder reactors. 
the fast reactor doesn't just transmute the inconvenient even numbered transuranic elements. It transmutes them, and then fissions them for power, so that these former wastes would actually become valuable. Disadvantages Breeder reactors are costly to build and operate, and are not likely to be cost competitive with thermal reactors unless the price of uranium increases dramatically. Due to the low cross sections of most materials at high neutron energies, critical mass in a fast reactor is much higher than a thermal reactor. In practice, this means significantly higher enrichment, 20% enrichment in a fast reactor compared to 